How often do you intentionally put yourself through suffering? And how often do you suffer in silence? Because if you've seen the theme, the last few weeks has been all about suffering. And some, there's a good suffering, then there's a bad suffering. There's an, an intentional suffering. There's a suffering that the universe sends to you that you need to go through to break you down so you can have those breakthroughs. But then there's also another kind of suffering where you're just suffering in silence. And then I want to ask you, do you know how, how to enter the, the magic threshold towards excellence and invincibility? And we are going to go through all that today on Steve Says episode number 91 as we focus on the mind, the body, and the business, on how you can have a role model mindset, how to operate with discipline, energy, confidence, being an action taker, and more importantly, being your freak self. Operating to dominate is what it's all about. So let's talk about it. We're going to be talking today about pain and suffering, sacrifice, hardship, challenge, and the lessons learned during this this crazy 24-hour push-up challenge we did. Literally awake for 24 hours, seeing how many reps you can get, what mistakes were made, what lessons were learned, what breakthroughs did we have after the breakdowns. And let me tell you, there were breakdowns and there were breakthroughs. So first, let's start with suffering. What is suffering? What is suffering? Suffering is adversity. Suffering is hardship. Suffering could be called discomfort. It could be called difficulty. Suffering is distress. But one thing that you don't hear as a definition of suffering is anything about failure or anything about being everlasting, or anything about even really being bad, or being something you need to avoid. Suffering is to undergo, uh, sustain disadvantages or loss. That's it. Sustain disadvantages or loss. It could also be to, to have to endure something. Enduring pain or stress, maybe injury, loss, or anything unpleasant. But that's not... A definitive thing. Suffering is not definitive. It's not the end. It's not a final thing. It's a phase. It's a, a, a feeling, almost just an emotion. And it's to endure. And suffering also can mean to endure pain and d- disability or death or, or, and also being, enduring it patiently and willingly can be suffering. So it's not some end of the line, end of the road, last freaking thing that there is on the earth. It's actually part of that magical threshold that we're talking about to get from the breakdown to the breakthrough. And that's what this is all about. That's what this 24-hour push-up challenge is all about. And, and it, it, it was a fundraiser for the big brothers, big sisters. We raised over $4,000. There's still some, some collections that need to be made on sponsorships that were made per amount of push-up. And let me tell you, the goal, well, my own personal goal was 10,000 push-ups. And I'll tell you what, I didn't even hit 5,000. The entire family together didn't even hit 10,000. But we'll get into that in, in a second. It's all about breakdown to breakthrough, the lessons that were learned during this challenge. And let me tell you something. You need, in order to have true, real breakthroughs in life, there has to be some form of breakdown, whether it's your ego, whether it's your thought process, your perspective, your stubbornness, your bullshittedness, there, there must be, you must be broken down in order to be built back up. And, and in times of suffering and hardship and adversity is when you discover who the fuck you really are. That's when you discover it. It's the tipping point. Suffering is really the tipping point of being broken down. And I see one, Instagram keeps pausing over there. Suffering is that, is that tipping point of, of being broken down to the, to the edge of what is endurable. And on that edge of what's endurable, you truly find out what the fuck you're made of. You find out who you really are and what the hell you're made of. And so that tipping point of, endur- of what's durable and let me tell you something, everything that's happened to you in your life to this point, if you're standing here, or you're listening to this, if you're fucking breathing this air, if you're still on this rock spinning around in circles, guess what? 
everything that has happened to you in your life, no matter how bad or fucked up it is, guess what? It was endurable because you're still here. If it wasn't endurable, you'd be fucking gone. You'd be dust. You'd be mist. You'd be pink fucking mist. But it's, it's happened to you and you're still here. It was endurable. Like, so think about that. Think about how much you can actually take, how much you can actually handle physically, mentally, emotionally. If you're still fucking here, it was obviously durable. And that's what suffering is. It's that tipping point, that breaking point. If it wasn't durable, you'd be fucking gone. You'd be gone. Because let me tell you, no great level of success or victory or financial gain was ever accomplished without a significant level of pain and suffering and fucking sacrifice. That's just the way it is. Those are prerequisites for the next level. Prerequisites really to, to reach any goal worth reaching. You can't expect something for nothing. You must go the motherfucking extra mile. And let me tell you something about the extra mile. The extra mile is a lonely freaking place. Because that gap in between where you are and that extra mile, that, the, the gap to get there is a lonely place. Because those people that are not willing to do what you're willing to do are going to talk shit about you. They're going to hate on you. They're going to try and drag you down. They're going to question you. They're going to doubt you. And it's going to cause you to start doubting yourself, questioning yourself, procrastinating. You need to be willing to go where others are willing not to go. That's what you need to be doing. Be willing to do what others are not willing to do. And expect nothing for it in return. Don't expect something for nothing. You need to overcome the objections and the negotiations going on in, on in your head with your inner bitch. That's what you need to do. Overcome the objections. That inner bitch is trying to sell you on some shit. And you need to overcome those fucking objections. You need to d dominate those negotiations. Control the narrative of those negotiations. That dark side of your character, that dark side of your character that's, that's in there within you, it must be accepted, confronted, controlled, and embraced. And then use that dark side as your fucking superpower. Dexter, the show, calls it his dark passenger. I'm not telling you to go out and kill a bunch of people and chop them up in little pieces. But there's a there's that little bitch in you and there's also that dark passenger. That fucking beast. Everyone's got it. Don't kill the beast. You need the beast. The beast is your friend. You just got to learn how to control it. How to contain it. Accept it. Confront it. Control it. Embrace it. Contain it. And then fucking use it as a superpower. Exploit that motherfucker. That's how you get... Going on that extra mile and not worry about what the fuck those haters and bullshitters are saying. It's just like what we do in the project. See the logo for the project right back here. That's what we do in the project. Men's personal development program. That's what we do. The project will break you down physically so we can build you back up mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, and even fucking financially. That's what we'll do with the project. Break down from bitch to breakthrough of beast is what's going to happen in the project. It's... This, this is what we're talking about here. It's, it's a magical threshold. It's a magic portal from where you are to where you need to be, to where you want to be, to where your fucking family des deserves for you to be. That's what you need to be thinking about. That's what suffering is. Suffering is that magic portal, that magic threshold. It's that line in the fucking sand. That's what suffering is. What side are you going to choose? And once you get to a certain level of suffering, and this happened on the push-up challenge, you, it was the first five, six hours of cruising. Literally, let, let me break it down to you like this. I got 600 push-ups in the first one hour. The last 12 hours, I only got 800 push-ups. So the middle push, middle round there got another whatever, a couple thousand, but just think about that. One hour, I got 600, and another block, the last 12 hours, only got 800. Because there come, there came that point, that, that, that tipping point of suffering. Which side are you going to choose? And I didn't go to sleep. I was up alone. Alone in the middle of the night. And I, I was telling myself, you know, I didn't tell my, it was in my head, like, you know what? I could, I could take a quick 30 minute nap. No one would know, but fuck that. I walked around the house. I went in the jacuzzi to try and make those elbows start fucking moving again. Cause they just were locked up. I was doing sets of one and two push up like every five minutes. But I made the decision that I'm going to break through this magical threshold. You know what was going on during this time? During this fucking May, I'm alone, lonely in that fucking extra mile all by myself. Everyone's passed out. All the other freaks passed out. 
I intentionally had a tablet open, a computer open, a notebook open with a fucking pen scattered all over the place because I'm wandering around, walking around whenever I could feel my fucking arms again doing another push-up, just chipping away. So you know what? I, I might not get 600 like I did in the first hour, but I'll get one this hour if I have to. I'll get one. Or at least I'll try to get one. I'll fucking go until my elbows break through the skin and explode out of my fucking body. That's what I'm going to do. That's, a, that's what the direction I chose. It was my decision. It was became a moment. And, and after those hours of the, the most extreme part of the suffering, becomes a moment of silence. A moment of stillness. A moment of clarity. A moment of discovery and solutions. Do you know that we literally created, pr- pretty much created a, an entire new like business model from scratch and also created different areas and different solutions in existing businesses within that 24 hours doing motherfucking push-ups doing push-ups there's such a a break it's, it's you break down to break through because all the other bullshit's gone all the bitchiness is gone once you make that decision to go through that portal once you break through that fucking portal There's fucking, there's magic in that area. Magic you can't find on your own. It can only find through that breakdown. Imagine that. I'm a grown-ass motherfucker. I do push-ups all the time. I'm walking around a house in circles by myself in the middle of fucking night trying to muster up the focus and the strength and the discipline to bang out one fucking push-up. But in that time in between, by figuring out how am I going to get this next push up, all these other ideas and solutions and discoveries and moments of clarity start coming into me. And it's not, I know people talk about flow. This is not flow. When you get to a level of suffering, flow is when you like what you're doing and you're having fun and you're getting in the flow and you're just losing track of time and you're forgetting to eat. Suffering is not flow. I'll tell you that. Suffering is some new, uh, different unexplainable level that's far beyond any flow or whatever the, whatever the fuck we talk about these days in the personal development world. It is far beyond flow. It's literally, I mean, I don't want it to sound like not too crazy. It's a connection to the fucking, to death. Think about it, death. That's what that, that's what that skull is for. Reminding yourself at every moment, you're going to die. You could die any moment. You might die in a minute from now. You don't know when your fucking ticket's going to get punched. That's what suffering is like. It brings you to that point. When you really push to that point of suffering, it pushes you to that, that, that different level beyond any flow where it's like a, a, a thought, thoughts and feeling in different elevated level. Like, all right, what direction am I going to go? Bitch or beast? Life or death? Your decision. Your fucking decision. Who are you? What are you made of? What are you really capable of? What's your real potential? And then you start realizing, I'm walking around, can't can't move my elbows. They're fucking locked. They're fucked up. Like you know what? Fuck that. I'm gonna get another push up. I'm gonna do another one. Final two hours. Back to doing sets of five and eight and ten. Just by going to that deep, that dark place, that dark passenger, killing that inner bitch. And calling on that dark passenger like, all right, motherfucker, let's do this. And we're just talking about push-ups. This is just push-ups. There's nothing that serious. This ain't like a war story, of course. You can't even compare to the suffering that some people go in life. But if you're not going through extreme suffering in, in those areas, that's a different story. But you need to create this suffering for yourself so you can get to that level and have that silence. And still, like, this was a, these were like a moment of, of clarity and, and solutions and quietness. And stiffness, stillness, stiffness, yeah, fucking stiffness in the bones, but stillness where the time just stops and some connection to the other world almost like crazy. Sounds fucking crazy, but that's what when you put yourself to that level of suffering, that's what you can do. Go attach yourself. Napoleon Hill calls it to infinite intelligence. And your subconscious mind is the connection from your conscious mind, your being, and your actions. The subconscious mind is your connection to that infinite intelligence. And you can't tap into that 
on your own. You can't intentionally tap into that. So you want us to suffer more. Yes. Yes, you want to suffer more. Of course, we're talking in a controlled, safe environment or safe-ish environment. We've already set up our next one. It's going to be 24 hours. This is already less than a month away. March 3rd and 4th. The next challenge, we have, we have challenges now, monthly challenges, just suffer fest challenges for the rest of the year. The next one's going to be 24 hours of biking. How many miles can we get in 24 hours? So, all right, back, so back to the push-ups. I set a goal of 10,000. I didn't even get close to 10,000. I started off probably too much thinking, th I thought 10 push-ups a minute would be sustainable. And it was for about six hours and it went to shit right from there. Went to shit. Went, went to shit from there and went down, broke down quick. So I, I did the math. If I would have just been doing sets of five push-ups a minute for 20 hours and had four hours of break mixed in between, I would have gotten over six, six to 7,000 push-ups. And I, only, I didn't even get five. So if I would have broken it down, just a wrong strategy, you learn. You let make lessons and you learn. So was this a failure? Was it a failure for me? I... Made a goal of 10,000 push-ups. That didn't even get to 50% of the goal. Was that a failure? So here's what you need to think about goals. Goals. Don't live... Of course, we want to set goals. You want to know what, what, what your goal is. But you really want to also set a, a process. Set a system and a process. And that's what the real victory is. Like, what does a win look like to you? Would a win be in 10,000... If I hit 10,000 push-ups but raised... No money? Would that have been a win? Or if I hit 10,000 push-ups by myself and not connecting with the family, would that have been a win? Or if I hit 10,000 push-ups and didn't get other people around the country to participate in this, do their own fundraisers? Like, uh, there was a Abe, one of the project graduates, did his own fundraiser in Idaho and raised over $4,000. At the same time, we did right along with us. He was suffering along with us. And he told me at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., whatever time, sometime early in the morning, a woman came in with her son. And Abe was in there by himself, maybe with one other person in the middle of the night. And a woman came with her son to watch him do his push-ups. She saw his updates on Facebook. And she brought her son in there just to watch him do push-ups. I guess they did a couple sets. I don't know the whole story about it. But she just wanted her son to see what it looked like in person and to feel that energy of what it looks like in person for someone who sets, you know, sets out to do something and doesn't quit and just keeps going for it. He had a goal of staying up the entire 24 hours, doing as many push-ups as he can, and that's what he did. And they came in there and just watched him. Just so her son can feel it and see it and experience it, what it's like. And she said it was a life-changing thing for her son just to get feel that. It was more of a feeling than anything else. Fucking crazy stuff. So if I got... 10,000 push-ups, but wasn't able to influence that. Was that a win? That wouldn't have been a fucking win. I'll take my 4,638 push-ups. Less than 50% of what the goal was that I set. And, and with raising f over $4,000 in 24 hours. Just something I threw together. Of something fun for the family to do. End up raising $4,000. End up coming up with all kinds of solutions to different problems in different businesses. End up coming up with an entire business model from scratch and like mapped it out within that time. Like this is some powerful stuff. That's what a fucking win is. So you need to think about what does a win look like to you? I want to tell you about the Squire program. We had a Squire program. There's a certain event in the Squire program. It's a program for dads and sons who the sons who are in that teen range about to start, you know, entering manhood. So they're between 12 and 13 to 15, 16, somewhere around there. And there's some competitions that the dads and sons do together and you want to win you want to win everything you do especially with your dad you want to win now there's some competitions they do where the dad and sons are together and they're competing against the other dads and sons and you look at one group the dad is you know there's stuff with a sledgehammer there's sandbags there's stuff manual labor you have to do in this race some of it's pretty hard especially if the son's a, a younger 13 or 12 year old it might be harder for him Maneuver around that sledgehammer. Get the work done. So you see some groups with the dad doing all the work. Yelling at the son. Come on. Carrying everything. The son's just coming along for the ride. Then you see another group. Where the dad is letting the son do the majority of the work. And talking him through it. 
coaching him, guiding him, teaching him how to use the sledgehammer properly so he doesn't hurt himself. Making sure that he's filling up the sandbag fully and not cutting it short as maybe other groups did. Making sure his son knows how to carry the bag while he's moving and that it's not too heavy. When it is, then they switch off. Checking in on the son if he's okay. Can he do it? Does he want to try it? Encouraging the son. There's no reason you can't do that. You can do this. I don't need to care for you. You got this. That group came in last place. Last place. Dead last. Not even close. The group with the the dad that filled up the bag himself, did all the sledgehammer work himself, and the son just watched by, twiddling his thumbs, they came in first place by a long shot. They blew the rest of them away. But the other dad came in last place. They finished. That group that came in last place, to me, those are the fucking winners. They left that event with the most, with the most bonding, the most connecting, the most knowledge, the most skill building, the most trust in each other. They're closer together after losing the race. Because what does a win look like? The win look like teaching the son how to use a sledgehammer, how to maneuver his body, how to stay focused, how to complete the task, how to not always just ask for help. 